And the Lord appeared unto Isaac and said, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Sons of Promise, Isaac and Jacob. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss and welcome back to Sons of Promise. The story about Isaac and Jacob and how God brings the blessing to the world through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob who is Israel. Yes, yeah. he, covenant keeping God, yes. keeping covenant in generation after generation. Yes. Yeah. And we see that alive in our lives today yes. with our children. Yes. Uh, but I love Rebecca mm. and how she is able to ask the Lord right what's going on at the same time you see you're also manipulating right. God into you know kind of like what Sarah did I, I have this promise yes but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it to pass yeah, I'm myself. gonna help you God yeah help you out we see the interplay between the will of man and the sovereign will of God right. and there really is an interplay it's even spoken of in, in Genesis in the Hebrew scripture says Vayomer Adonai Lishnei Goyim Bevidnech in other words yes mm. there are two nations alive in your womb talk about conflict yeah Israel and Edom. Yes, Israel and Edom, or as we say, you know, Jacob and Esau. Uh, Jacob becomes Israel. We'll mm -hmm. see that take place. And Edom, Esau is the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same name. Mm -hmm. and in fact, the land of Edom is identified with Esau, mm -hmm. and it means red, and it has to do with the land that was given and also the mess of pottage that he despised his birthright regarding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we want to uh, pick up our story. We're going to go and see the conflict develop between Jacob and Esau, a conflict that's continuing into our day as the sons of Jacob and the sons of Esau are still trying to work out that which began in the womb. Let's go to our story. Bene. ‫כנביננני. ואוכלה בעבור תברכה נפשי בטרם אמות. כן, אבי, אחי נמת עמך. שמעתי את אביך מדבר עם אחיך עשו לאמור, הביאה לי ציד, אכן לי מטעמים ואוכל, למען אברכך לפני אדוני לפני מותי. ואתה שמע לי, גש אל הצאן, הבא לי שני גדי עזים, אכין מהם מטעמים, ואתה תיקחם לאביך, למען יברך אותך לפני מותו. אין עשו אחי איש שעיר, ואנוכי חלק, ותבוא עליי קללה ולא ברכה. עליי קללתך בני, ואתה מהר והבא לי את הגדיים. We're coming to you from the center of the universe, Jerusalem, where the conflict of the ages is being played out in our day, and it really has roots back in the biblical story in Genesis 27 and in that area of the Bible, doesn't it? Right. We're going to see the biblical roots of political conflicts today. It started in Rebecca's womb. It started when she had these two twins wrestling inside of her, and she went to the Lord and she said, what is going on? And the Lord spoke to her and he said, two nations are in your womb and I will separate these two nations and they will be two nations unto me, nation of Edom and the nation of Israel. And we see how this plays out. Man tries to get involved, Rebecca tries to get involved, but God is ultimately sovereign in all that we have in life. That's true. Listen to what Genesis 27, 1 says. Vayhi ki zachan yitzchak v'tachu einav merot. 
And it was that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, to him and said to him, My son. And he said to him, Here I am. What we're seeing here is that Isaac was dim in his eyes, but there was also a spiritual dimness that came over him as well. And he, like Rebekah, was going to try to fulfill in the natural something that God had already ordained in the spiritual realm. You see, they were two different characters. Yes, Yaakov grabbed the heel and could be seen as a supplanter, but he also was a man who was after God's own heart. We see his name, y Jacob, Yaakov, it right. means in Hebrew it's Tom, which is a homebody, a man of the tents, someone who stays near the family. And Esau was a hunter, a great hunter, a man of the field. It's interesting that the only other hunter mentioned in the Bible is Nimrod, whose name is associated always with rebellion. Now as a man of the field, he really is fulfilling something that Yeshua will refer to later. When Yeshua comes on the scene, he's going to say that the field is the world in Matthew 13, 38. And here we see Esau described as a man of the field. The field is the world. Esau is pitched towards the world and Yaakov is pitched towards God. And it's a picture of the man of faith and the man of unbelief. So in the believing world, it has to do with someone who's pointing towards God, even with his failures and difficulties, and someone who's coming away from God. And we see that in both. Hebrews 12, 16 has a very strong statement about Esau's choices and how they are profane, meaning worldly, that they're going away from God, and how he is coming to Isaac now for a blessing and asking, do you have another blessing? Isn't there more that you can give me? And we're going to see that, in fact, there are blessings for both. There's a blessing for Esau, there's a blessing for Isaac, but there's a covenant through the line of Isaac. And we'll see more about that when we come back after this. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At Levitt.com, you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. אנוכי, עשיו, הנך הבכור, הבאתי לך בבשר הזה. שב אבי, אכול, ואז תברכני. מה זאת בני? הכיצד זה מיהרת לשוב מן הציד? אדוני אלוהיך הביאה אליי. גש נא ועמושך בני. ועדע. אם עשיו מי אתה אם לאו. הכל, הכל יעקב. הידיים ידי עשיו. אתה זה עשיו בני? כן, הנני. שדה, אשר ברכו אדוני, ויתן לך אלוהים מטל השמיים ומשמני הארץ, ברוב דגן ותירוש, יעבדוך עמים וישתחוו לך לאומים, ויהיה גביר לאחיך וישתחוו לך בני אמך, אורך ארור ברכיך, ברוך. יש 
standing here in front of the Knesset, the place of Israel's government, the parliament. You know, years ago, I brought a group of pastors into the parliament, and Benny Alon, the minister of tourism, an Orthodox rabbi, told my group that we, the Jewish people, are children of Abraham, and you Christians are children of Abraham by faith. That's what makes us one, and that's what we need for Jacob and Esau as we're looking at this story and we're seeing that Rebecca is using natural means to try and accomplish God's will. But I would say don't judge her too harshly because we see in the Brit Chadashah in Romans tells us that uh, in Romans 2.1 not to judge because chances are we'll do the same thing at some point or another. But we need to be careful that we do not judge, that we do not go after natural means because it can lead to going after sin and the devil himself. For example, Psalm 1 tells us not to walk in the way of the ungodly because that will lead to us standing in, this, in the way of sinners and eventually sitting in the seat of the scornful. It's tragic to run into people who are scornful of the things of God because the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Well, Isaac is getting older, his eyes are dimming, his spiritual eyes may be dimming also because he allows himself to be caught in this intrigue. It's all within God's will though because God has a covenant with the sons of Isaac and a blessing for Esau. Esau goes outside of the tribe against his parents will and he marries Hittite women, two of them actually, Judith and Bashemath. He marries two Hittite women against the will of his dad and his mom and we see that this is a progression in the grudge building that leads to him becoming coming under a negative oppressive spiritual spirit. You see in the language Shin, Tav and Mem is a grudge and very close to that Shin, Tav, Nun is Satan himself, the accuser of the brethren and he's waiting till his father dies so that he can kill his brother. The grudge becomes a murderous rage and the sons of Esau are vulnerable to that murderous rage. That's why Yeshua could ask the Pharisees when they said, we are of our father Abraham. He said, if you were of your father Abraham, you would do the works of your father in John 8, 44. But if you're Abraham's children, you need to do the works of your father. In John chapter 8, he says, be careful that you're not the children of Satan himself because you have nurtured in your heart resentment. Now in the Pharisees' case, the Perushim, some of them actually came against the Mashiach himself. And so we have a higher calling on us. Above and beyond all of this, Hebrews 12, 14 tells us that we are to pursue peace with all men. And so as we're looking to the government here, we know that there's a higher government and that the government is on the shoulder of Mashiach and he is the one who rules from heaven and will eventually rule on earth. We'll be back after this. Shalom, Miles Weiss here. And Catherine Weiss. And we're so grateful to be able to bring you these programs. You know, we couldn't do it without your partnership. So if you would get in touch with us at 1-800-WONDERS, levitt.com, or the mailing address on your screen, we're asking you to consider giving us an even greater gift at this time so we can bring you some more excellent programming from Israel and to bring you an update of what's happening in the world regarding Israel, the Jewish people, and the coming of Messiah. Thank you so much. Israel, when you come to Israel, you will go to the places and you will walk where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob walked. We would love it if you come with us yes. and we could host you. Miles, it's a joy to bring pilgrims. You've often said that Israel is only a few miles wide, right. but 50 centuries deep. Yeah, it's so a, it's a continual well. Mm -hmm. Not just one time will you get something out of it, but again and again, and we always yeah. get something new. It's really true. It's an endless revelation right. from the Word and by the Spirit. 
God just uh, opens up your eyes and your heart when you're there. That's the testimony we hear from everyone who comes. Mm -hmm. We would love to send you our newsletter. The Levitt letter is available to you. It's free. It has articles about Israel, about stewardship, about the current events that yeah, are going on there. Wonderful. It's just a great resource. We found people have told me that we do the heavy lifting for them of sifting through a lot of the news and bringing them that which is most mm -hmm. important and current. So uh, we want to invite you to sign up for that at levitt.com or 1-800-WONDERS. And also our resource this week is Broken Branches. Mm. This is Zola's book on replacement theology and it really is a primer. It's a very simple, straightforward book regarding the question, has the church replaced Israel? The answer is no. However, uh, if you want to know more about that, please get in touch with us. We'd love to get this resource available to you. Well, our story continues. We have the conflict between well, Esau yeah. and Jacob is increasing mm -hmm. and Esau is asking for a blessing. Mm -hmm. and we're about to see what happens when he gets that blessing. He gets the blessing. Yeah. And it's really a word about the conflict that we're living with today. We're seeing it play out politically, but its roots are biblical. So let's go to our story. Soon after Isaac had given his blessing to Jacob, Esau approached his father's bedside with the food he had prepared. When Isaac found that he had been deceived by Jacob, he was very angry. I'm standing in front of the menorah that was donated to Israel, and it's a, got pictures on it of the entire history of Israel, who has always been intended to be a light to the nations. We're near the Knesset, the symbol of the Israeli government, parliament and really relates to our story because there's a prophecy that comes over Esau as he comes in to Isaac for a blessing and that prophecy refers forward to 2 Chronicles 21 verse 8. 2 Chronicles 21 verse 8 speaks about the controversy between David and Edom. Edom are the descendants of Esau, David of course the descendants of Isaac and Jacob and the controversy is about the prophecy that Isaac gives to Esau that he would break the yoke off of Judah. Well, what that means is that this conflict will be going on throughout the generations. And we've seen that in the biblical history and we see it even today. There's a conflict between the sons of Esau and the sons of Jacob. And Satan comes as the accuser and that's what happens to Esau is that he nurtures that grudge and he misses the chesed, the grace of God, the loving kindness of God. And it really for us is a warning about how we view life. Do we filter life through past pain or do we look at it through present prophecy? Do we allow God's word to awaken us, to quicken us, to make us alive to his promises, to his goodness, to his chesed? Or do we let circumstances and suffering color the way we see life? And really that's what we're seeing playing out politically today. We can't look at life through the suffering of the day, we have to refer back to the Word because it's the only sure way to understand what's happening in the Middle East and what's happening in the world. Well, there's a great promise here as well. A few chapters from now, after Jacob has his encounter with God, there's going to be a meeting between Jacob and Esau. We don't know how it turns out, but we do know that it contains a picture of a marvelous reconciliation that I believe is in the heart of God. Because when Jacob and Esau come back together, Jacob is trying to curry favor with Esau. And Esau, who had been holding a grudge and had sworn to kill him, now says to him, keep what you have. I have enough as well. And Jacob says, when I looked upon your face, it is as if I had seen the face of God. Wow, what a promise. The promise is that Esau, or the sons of Esau, if they will allow God through Mashiach, to touch their hearts. They will come with that sense of 
I have enough, I'm satisfied, and I can live with you in peace because I don't need what you have. God has satisfied me. And that's the promise of the reconciliation that's available through Yeshua. I love your teaching, Miles, on healing the family feud. You yes. know, the potential that God has always or ordained that anybody can be reconciled, right. you know, and the, the potential is there for Esau to be reconciled with Jacob. Exactly. Through the cross. Exactly. The promise is there. The potential is there. Unfortunately, we see here and there now and then uh, a son of Esau actually having the revelation of who Yeshua is, and through that, Jacob and Esau, the sons of Jacob right. and Esau, coming to and love one another. And that wouldn't that be wonderful if everybody would say, like Esau said at that moment, yes. "I have enough, yes. my brother." Yes. That they wouldn't just be fighting over this, you know, little piece of land right. when they have so much. Right. But their their religious bent almost makes them have to fight. Well, right? We all need to come in through the same door. Right. In order to have love, we need to receive love. And uh, one of the ways that we express our love for the Lord is through the ministries mm -hmm. that we're a part of in Israel. And we have a great ministry in Haifa, based in Haifa, called Tents of Mercy. Our man in Haifa is Eitan Shishkov. He's a pioneer who's been there. And just as Herzl led the Jewish pioneers to plant the land, return to the land, so it is today, the Messianic remnant, the Messianic believers are planting That's in right. the land spiritually. Eitan is one of the leaders of the Messianic movement. So let's go to Mark Levitt's interview with Eitan Shishkov. Well, hello, Eitan. Welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. Thank you very much. Shalom. And uh, welcome to Tents of Mercy as well as uh, to Israel. It's a pleasure to sit with you again and visiting your website, your ministry's website, www.tentsofmercy.org. I see that there are about five facets to all that you do. Please tell the viewers about it. One is humanitarian aid, and that is no strings attached, and helping people, uh, particularly as it's developed, in connection with the local social services uh, department and, and the workers, uh, which gives me great satisfaction because we don't see ourselves as being separate from Israeli society. So we want to work together hand in hand with the rest of the nation uh, to work on social problems. and. Uh, although people are not starving in the streets, um, there's a lot of economic pressure, uh, both on young families, on senior citizens. So we distribute food, uh, clothing, um, household goods uh, to families in needs. That's, that's one emphasis. And uh, then, as you mentioned, um, we also see the youth of the nation as being the future. I mean, they're the future of any country. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And so um, about 12 years ago, we started together with other congregations, uh, a ministry to uh, engage in conferences and camps uh, with young people uh, several times a year. So that's one of the, one of the key works that, that's taking place that I feel is, is extremely valuable. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, the training of younger leaders, which is more organic than academic. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, not that, that academics are, have uh, no value. They do. They're very, you know, it's very valuable to, to learn the scriptures uh, academically. However, it's interesting that Jesus took his disciples around and they just traveled and talked and they watched him and it was all kind of very uh, organic and, and, and on a very close level. So I have found that that's the most effective way to transform people's lives and to take them from maybe a, a condition of promise and potential mm -hmm. to fulfillment, especially as a young Hebrew speaking leader in this land. And so that's, uh, that's another very, very vital focus uh, that I have seen over the years um, is, is helping transform uh, the movement. And remember, the Messianic movement in Israel is relatively young. I mean, my wife and I are among practically the first generation. There are a few older timers before us. We're very grateful for those. But for the most part, the people who are of our generation, I'm now in my 60s, are the first generation of Jewish followers of Yeshua, Jesus, in almost 20 centuries. Uh, and especially here in Israel, it's a very new concept. There are only about 14,000 of us 
uh, out of six million people in Jewish families. That's like, works out to be one half of 1%. So it's, it's really, you know, on one level, new kid on the block. On another level, history is repeating itself. And uh, it's a great joy to be involved in pioneering. Hey, Tom, I'd like to close by inviting our viewers to visit levitt.com, click on Levitt Letter, and read your monthly article, Our Man from Haifa. I would love for people to read that. Uh, it's a joy, actually, to, uh, to participate and, and to write on a monthly basis. I seek to kind of open a window onto Israel. And um, it's more of uh, what's happening you know, on the ground, in the neighborhoods kind of thing. I write a, a lot about my own experiences in Israel and, uh, and then seek to show how those experiences and how everyday life in Israel reflects the words of the prophets. Well, thanks for visiting with me today, Eitan. A great pleasure. What a thrill to be connected with Eitan. He's doing a major work there in the north of Israel and throughout the land, preaching the gospel, touching people with the love of God, and building congregations, reaching for the next generation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Reaching for the sons of promise. Exactly. Well put. Well, until we see you next time, we want to invite you to come back, continue the story of Isaac and Jacob with us, and see what God is doing today through the Jewish people. And remember, Sha'alu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our resource on this program, the book Broken Branches. In appreciation for your donation of $10 or more, we will send you Zola's book on replacement theology. Some denominations have tried to cast away the roots of Christianity, the Jewish people, and the promised land. Zola clearly explains the church has not replaced Israel. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for Broken Branches or visit us at levitt.com. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.